Great. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for spending um, your lunch hour with us um, for our webinar on how to make the most of your New England Waterworks Association memberships. My name is Colleen Heath, and um, I'll be kind of moderating um, this webinar. I'm chair of the New England Waterworks um, Association Membership Committee. I've been a member of the association for about 11 years. I joined as a student, and um, I've been working um, as a consultant with CDM Smith for the past eight years, and um, they've enabled me to be um, an active member of this association. And um, what we're really trying to do here is um, give people a sense of, um, you know, the different benefits to membership, whether it be, um, you know, learning opportunities, volunteering opportunities, environmental stewardship, and things like that. Um, So a few housekeeping um, items. Um, I just want to let everyone on the um, webinar know that this is being recorded and um, the recording will be um, accessible at a later date if you want to go back and um, you know, see what we talked about. And um, we do encourage questions. If you look at the GoToWebinar panel that should be showing up on your screen, um, there is a questions tab where um, we encourage you to type in questions that we'll go over at the end of the webinar. Um, we have muted all of the participants' phones, um, so if you need to communicate with us, um, do so using um, the questions panel for questions, um, or if you're having any technical difficulties, um, please contact Danielle Jackson, um, whose email address is listed on this slide. Um, so. Um, our webinar today is going to cover um, a brief introduction to the association, and then we're going to go into um, all the networking opportunities we have, um, what our conferences and meetings look like, um, what our committees consist of and how to get involved, um, our educational opportunities, and then finally, um, some upcoming volunteer opportunities and events. Um, so I wanted to introduce our presenters. Um, so I'm Colleen, um, but we're also going to have Matt Stos from the Connecticut Water Company talk about um, our networking opportunities. He's the New England Water Works Connecticut State Director and is also an active member of the membership committee. We're then going to have Dave Pukari talk about our conferences and meetings. Um, Dave is with CDM Smith and he's a New England Water Works past president and he's also active in the Sponsor Services Committee. Um, we'll then have Michaela Bogosh from CDM Smith talk about um, the different committees that you can get involved with and um, what sort of benefits those entail. She's um, an active member on the membership committee as well as young professionals. And finally, we're going to have Dan Wojcik um, from Penichuk Water um, talk about our educational opportunities, which is a great fit for him because he's the education committee chair. Just a brief introduction into the association. New England Waterworks is a membership organization for um, any interested parties working um, in the drinking water profession. And um, it's a section of um, the larger American Waterworks Association that covers um, you know, the United States, Canada, India, and more. Uh, we were established in 1882. And we're really looking to bring together utilities, consultants, manufacturers, vendors, regulators, and academia. So we have members that kind of encompass the entire water industry, and we're all working together on committees to kind of promote um, our mission. So speaking of that mission, um, this slide just kind of contains the mission statement for our association to promote public health, safety, quality of life, and environmental stewardship through education, training, advocacy, and outreach relating to safe drinking water and to advance the membership as noted in the AWWA Articles of Incorporation. Um, when we started developing this webinar, we wanted to um, solicit some real testimonials as to what the benefits of New England Water Works membership was. Um, so one of the people that stepped up to provide a testimonial is Nate Little. He's an engineer with the Massachusetts Water Resources Authority, and he's also a past chair of the Young Professionals Committee and current member of our New England Water Works Board. So clearly, um, you know, given his credentials as a young professional, you can tell how um, good of a benefit New England Water Works gave to him. And we also got the perspective of a past president, Dave Polkari from CDM Smith, talking about the benefits that he's seen. 
Um, some additional testimonials that we got were from um, Matt Stos from the Connecticut Water Company talking about um, the benefits personally and professionally to New England Water Works Association. And our membership committee, um, Vice Chair Sandra La Rochelle from Ty and Bond, um, providing another young professional's perspective and um, how beneficial her involvement has been to her career. Um, so with that, I'd like to um, transition over to Matt Stos to talk a little bit about how um, networking and community involvement has um, helped his career. Hey, this is Matt Stos. So uh, thank you again for being on the webinar today. Um, I've been involved with New England Water Works Association for just about 20 years now. And I can tell you that being involved in this organization has brought such tremendous benefit from a networking standpoint. Uh, and it's helped me in a, in a number of capacities. Um, the one is just, you know, finding, finding new suppliers for, you know, in working for a water utility, uh, understanding my supply base, but also uh, learning things and being able to just, you know, call a friend who's an engineer and bounce something off of them and, and, and um, just um, continue to get insight on, on new and upcoming topics in the industry. So there's really a lot to it. And um, if we can go to the next page. So I'm going to start with the uh, the young professionals, and this is this is really a great way to to is to have a beginning or a starting point uh, in the industry. So there's a few things that that happen here uh, on this slide here in, in terms of events, and the first is um, the meet and greet breakfast. This meet and greet breakfast is uh, it's held annually at the Worcester Trade Show and Symposium. It's held at the end of uh, March or the beginning of April. And it's really an opportunity for you to network with your peers. Uh, most of these peers may be, uh, they could be engineering students or they could be new people to the workforce, but there's also established professionals as well. And it, it's, it's, a, it's a good um, time to, to meet new faces and to start making some contacts. So when this started, it started really kind of small, this, this meet and greet breakfast, and it has grown over the years. And as you can see by the picture on the slide here, I mean, it gets pretty big. And w one of the things that I've, I've, I've really liked about Nilo, and when I look around a room now, I see so many people that I know. And these are, these are people who are either work colleagues, they could be business relationships, but you know what? There's a lot of friends there too. And, and that's, that's, a, that's a, a good feeling at these events. So the Young Professionals Committee is a pretty active committee. Um, a couple of the other events here are the, the Red Sox event in Boston and the Celtics event, you know, sporting events are, they're good events to, to go to uh, with uh, some of your peers. A couple other things on this slide as well is the NIWA and NUWIA uh, YP Summit. It's similar to the meet and greet breakfast, but New England, um, New England Water Works Association and NUWIA, so if you're not sure what NUWIA is, that's the New England Water Environment Association, and they're more focused on uh, stormwater and wastewater. So that's another uh, area for, uh, for some networking. There's also the YP presentation series, and this is really pretty cool. It's a practice presentation series, and they're, it's, uh, they're events that are hosted generally at one of your peers or at a YP office. And, and what happens there is you practice presentations in front of others, and then they give you feedback and tips for improvement. So these happen about quarterly. Um, you, if you're on the YP committee, uh, and if you're not, I, I would suggest getting involved. Um, you would find out about these events uh, through, through that committee. It's also on social media, and it's also on the New England Water Works website. There are, there are also treatment plant and brewery tours and Earth Day cleanup. So there's, there's really a, a number of events that are, that are pretty active uh, committee and they give you quite an opportunity to, to network. Next slide. The mentor program. So this, is, this, this program started, I don't think we have it on the slide, 
This is actually 11 years ago that this, that this program started. And this is really where we seek to pair an, a, an established uh, professional with somebody new to career. And, and really the idea is, is to um, help the new member gain a greater knowledge of New England Waterworks and the water industry, and also to get them involved. This can take a, a lot of different forms, and what I find is that each mentor pairing is is unique. And in, in some cases, um, it may be somebody helping uh, an established professional helping somebody out with a resume. It might be them uh, just simply sitting down and bringing them to their office to show them how things work at their place of business. Uh, it takes all different forms, but it's been a successful program. We've graduated over 50 people um, in, in the time that the, the program has been around. So how it works is we generally pair you with somebody who has a similar interest uh, to you, uh, to help facilitate your area of uh, development and interest. And uh, we try to do it within driving distance if we can. Uh, it's better if they're, they're, they're closer. Uh, we don't, it's not too big of a lift. Uh, in terms of meeting, we do want you to meet a couple times. Also meet at um, uh, at least two New England Waterworks uh, events. But the other times, uh, they're uh, a remote or they're phone conversations. And, and at the end of the program, uh, which takes anywhere from six to 12 months, depending on your uh, availability, we hope that it's not just a mentor that you've had there, but we hope that it's a friend that you've gained and somebody that when you walk into a, a room or you walk into an event, you hey, there's so-and-so, you walk over and shake their hand. So um, there, there's quite a bit to the mentor program. Um, Lauren Underwood and Michaela Bogish uh, both lead that program. Their contact information is here. So if you have any questions and you'd like to reach out and know more, please contact them. Next slide. All right, the networking committee. This is just a fun committee and who doesn't like fun? They're informal, they're impromptu, impromptu social get-togethers, um, drinks, apps, fun, could be bowling, could be a pool, uh, could be anything like that. So the networking committee is, um, that's a, that's a, it's a fun thing to do sometimes there. Okay, next slide. This is probably my favorite slide because I love the Ski Classic, and the Ski Classic is uh, is great. It's in January. It's either at Mount Sunapee or Gunstock and uh, Mountain. And if you're a skier, it is a ton of fun. And uh, we don't usually get a huge group, but the group there has a great day skiing. And the Apre Ski Hour is a lot of fun. So when you come in and cold off those off of those slopes and um, and the um, the adult beverages are available, and there's some, usually some pretty good appetizers and some snacks. So it's a great, great time. And if, if you're a skier, I highly recommend it. Um, golf Cl Golf Classic is also a good one. Uh, that happens in uh, in May. I think it's May 4th this year. Uh, and I'm not sure if I set up, but the Ski Classic is in January. Next slide. Alumni Club. So this is established in 2013, a little over 12 mem members. The goal here is to keep retired members of the association engaged. And uh, you'll see uh, past presidents of the organization or past presidents of, of maybe their respective business. They're, uh, they're a good group of folks that um, uh, we need to, to keep them engaged is important because they, they know a lot of history. There's a lot that they understand and it's good to be able to pick their brain sometimes. They also coordinate the New England Waterworks photo contest as well. So look for that on our website. And with that, I think I'm done and I can hand it off to the illustrious David Polcari. Well, thank you very much, Matt. I appreciate that introduction. Um, my name is Dave Polcari from CDM Smith and I've been in, involved as an active member in New England Waterworks for almost my entire uh, 30 plus year career. And uh, I've served on as a committee member, committee chair, and have uh, gone through the chairs as an officer and member of, of the board. Um, it's really been a great part and uh, part of my career to been been involved in New England Waterworks. I've met so many people, made so many friends, uh, have learned a lot, and had a lot of fun during 
during the whole time. So I really encourage you to uh, to get involved and not just be a member, be an active member. So I'm I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, conferences and meetings. We have them uh, throughout the entire year, and there's always something here for everyone. So I encourage you to uh, try and attend. Next slide. So our flagship event is really our annual conference. It uh, it's a four day event that is held every September, generally towards the end of September. We rotate uh, throughout the New England states. This upcoming year will be at the Mount Washington Hotel in Bretton Woods, New Hampshire. It's uh, a great venue and it's uh, it's a lot of fun. I really encourage you to try and get up there. Uh, the, the conference starts off on Sunday afternoon with uh, a little meet and greet type reception, a lot of fun. A lot of We usually have like a costume event or some kind of a uh, uh, like a lighthearted dinner and way to just unwind and, and meet people and settle in for the week. Um, Monday and Tuesday is uh, a lot of technical sessions. They run most of the day. We have a, an opening general session and then technical tracks that, that run all day, Monday and Tuesday. There's a lot of great networking events at the conference, whether it's uh, on Sunday afternoon at the meet and greet, uh, receptions on Monday and Tuesday, uh, evenings. There's a, an annual membership recognition gala that's held on Tuesday afternoon where we give out some of our highest awards uh, that the association gives every year and do the, the pomp and circumstance of the association passing of gavel to the new, new presidents uh, and leadership. Um, we also have a little exhibit on Tuesday with us, some exhibitors. Um, usually have a little contest. We've had uh, tank building contests, uh, an aqueduct building contest this year, which was which was new and fun, and it's just a great way to have a little competition, a little lighthearted competition, and um, and again meet some more people and expand your network and have some fun. Uh, also, it's great. A lot of our committees will meet at um, at this meeting, so if you're interested in joining a committee, it's a great way to just audit the committee. You know, sit in on a meeting. They're all published on on the schedule and just meet people and see if that's something that you'd like to be involved in. And I, I do really encourage you to, to join on the committee. So hopefully you can make the annual conference. Next. Okay, we have monthly meetings, three throughout the year. We have them in November, December, and January. The November meeting is with the Rhode Island Waterworks Association, generally held in a Rhode Island uh, city or sometimes uh, on a Massachusetts city right in the border always in November. So that one is coming up uh, this week, I think. So if you can make it down there, it's a great chance to get down there and meet some people. Generally, our monthly meetings have about uh, 100 people, um, except the December meeting, which is um, held always at the Lantana and Randolph Mass. This year, it's at December 19th on a, on a Thursday. There'll probably be close to three or 400 members at that, uh, that event. Really great time. To, uh, to get out, meet a lot of people right before the holidays. So it's a, a fun time to just say hello and, uh, and meet everybody. Um, all of our meetings, monthly meetings have a technical program, usually four to five speakers, uh, networking opportunities. Sometimes we'll have small tabletop exhibits. And again, just a great time to meet everybody. And then finally, the January meeting held with the New Hampshire Waterworks Association. This year it's at in Nashua at the Nashua Country Club on uh, Thursday, January 16th. Again, technical program, a uh, little networking, and it's the day before the ski classic. So if you want to parlay that into a two-day event, it's a lot of fun. I, I, I run the ski classic, and I have done that for, for many years. It's, it, as Matt said, it's a lot of fun. So that's uh, at the end of January. So hopefully you can make that. Next slide. All right. So our spring conference and exhibition. This is our biggest uh, event, and it's one of the one of the biggest regional waterworks events in the United States. So it's held in Worcester at the beginning of April, end of March. You know, this year it's April 1st and 2nd. It's at the DCU Center in Worcester. Um, always a huge attendance. We had 3,200 attendees last year, and we just continue to uh, to break records with attendance at this event. It's a huge event. Uh, two days, a Wednesday and a Thursday. There's over 180 exhibitors in the exhibit hall. Uh, two days of solid technical programs all day, um, Wednesday and Thursday. Really great chance to, to learn a lot. Great chance to hear some great technical uh, topics, ask questions, and great time to meet people. There's 
a lot of networking events at this thing. As uh, Matt said, there's a um, YP breakfast, a new member breakfast on uh, that Wednesday morning. There's uh, a large reception on Wednesday afternoon with uh, food and drink. You get a chance to really meet meet people and in, uh, in network for a couple of hours. Uh, we have tours generally both days to a regional water treatment plant or other uh, facility of interest. We've had a career fair and a poster session, which has really been uh, been very well received and, and fun. We've also had, um, more recently, though, over the past three years, we've had this hydrant hysteria contest, which is a great opportunity for operators to uh, showcase their skills and compete assembling a hydrant um, in, a, in a fast time. These guys do it in under two minutes. It's incredible to watch, really high energy. And the winners, uh, we get to send two teams to the American Waterworks annual conference and exhibition. And this year it's in Orlando, Florida. So these guys really compete hard. They do a great job and they compete at the national level. And I think our team last year came in um, in the top five in the United States. So great, great time. Um, and I, again, another opportunity to uh, audit technical uh, or committees at this event. If you're interested in being in a committee, almost all committees will meet over this two day period. And again, a great time to uh, to see what they're all about and, and meet some people. And next slide, uh, just a plug for the YP Summit. I think Matt Matt did mention this uh, on one of his his slides. So it's something we've done with uh, uh, Nuia every year for the past few years. It's held in conjunction with the Nuia Conference, which is in uh, the end of January at the Copley Plaza Hotel in Boston. So it's on a Sunday afternoon, and it's a, a great chance to bring together YPs from from both associations, we've got a lot in common, a lot of common members and and mission, and um, it, you know it's focused on on leadership. And there's always some great speakers there talking about leadership, how to uh, you know advance your career in the water and wastewater field. Really, a great opportunity to network with um, with your peers, and I really encourage you to 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 attend. Um, you know, we, we've said a lot about networking. You'll hear a lot about it today. And networking is such a big part of our association and really a, a benefit to being a member. So it's it's one thing to actually be a member on paper, but you really get the most value by being an engaged member, attending our events and networking and meet new people. And it's it's going to benefit you as a person. And, and I know it'll benefit your career. It certainly has has for me. Next slide. Okay, so I get a chance to turn it over to Michaela, and she's going to talk about our committees. Thanks, Dave. Um, so my name is Michaela Bogosh. I am an environmental engineer and project manager at CDM Smith. I've been in the water industry for about eight years now, and all, all at CDM Smith, um, and in, been involved with New England Waterworks uh, to varying degrees since since college, but really become more actively involved in the past few years, and have found it to be very rewarding. So. I'm going to step through some of the or all of the different committees that you can get involved in in New England Waterworks and just give you a little bit of um, an idea of what each of those entails. Next slide. So as you can see on the slide, there's over 50 committees that you can get involved in in New England Waterworks, and they really um, span a variety of topics, some more technical and educational to a more of the more networking based type committees that um, that Dave uh, has talked about in, in past slides. So it's really, um, you can pick your, your area of interest and in, in your level of commitment um, based on, you know, what the charge is for each of these committees. They mostly meet monthly, um, usually by conference call or in person, depending on what events they have coming up that given month. But um, yeah, you're, you're, uh, your level of commitment can really be on you and, um, you know, all of them really need some great active members. So I'll step through each of these different uh, councils and committees in the next few slides. Next slide. So the administration council, they're really tasked with a broad set of responsibilities, but they're involved in all the association's major activities um, as they relate to the organization administration uh, conferences and all the different meetings. So within this council, there's the American Waterworks Nominating Committee. Uh, they each year nominate candidates for the annual um, election of the American Waterworks Vice President and Director of, at Large. 
Um, there's the exhibits committee that works at overseeing the different exhibit opportunities at each of the different association conferences. There's the New England Waterworks Facilities Committee and the Fundraising Committee, uh, which works on association association wide fundraising drives and projects. There's also the Innovations Committee, the Program Committee, and they, they really develop the, the content for each of the monthly meetings, as well as the spring um, and the fall annual conference. There's the Site Selection Committee, which works with the board of directors on uh, choosing locations for all of the monthly meetings, as well as the different, the different conference locations. And then there's the Sponsor Services Committee, uh, which works with our sponsors um, of New England Waterworks and to maximize their involvement and get the most out of their uh, membership in the association. So next there's the Communications Council. Um, they really work to publicly position New England Waterworks as a, an effective advocate for the drinking water profession, uh, public water supplies, and also to educate the public on uh, drinking water related topics. So within this council, there's the, the Legislative and Regulatory Affairs Committee, and they, um, they monitor all legislative actions in all of New England states, but also convey that information to um, the organization from information at the national level as well. There's the, the Public Relations Committee and the Publications Committee, which works with New England Waterworks staff on the various um, email exchanges and uh, printed documents that are, that are handed out to members of the organization. Um, there's also the Youth Education Committee, which um, works to develop youth education programs. Uh, and that really aims uh, at students from preschool all the way up to, to 12th grade. So they have a variety of public outreach materials that you can use um, either at your utility or if you need to visit your child's school and talk to them more about uh, what you do for your, for your job. They have a variety of materials for you to use. All right, next slide, please. So next we have the Environmental Stewardship Council. Um, this council has worked, uh, are tasked with developing different forums for discussing and conveying um, information on uh, research, legislative and regulatory matters, and um, directly affecting, that directly affect the drinking water community. So within this council, there's the Conservation Sustainability Water Resources uh, Committees. And their, their big event each year, they also collaborate with the, the Groundwater Commit Committee, and they they develop the Water Resources and Sustainability Symposium, which happens in the, the fall each year. Um, so the, that just happened at the end of October, and um, the title of that event was Success in the Face of Challenge. And um, it's a full day event, and it really uh, picks on topics that target each of these different areas uh, of environmental stewardship. So that's always a really well-attended event, and um, you know has a lot of uh, a broad area of um, content for people to get um, get involved in. So next slide, please. So now we have the Operations Council. Um, within that council, there's uh, a variety of uh, committees. There's the Distribution and Storage Committee, and they, they work to develop different training courses with New England Waterworks staff. There's also, as I mentioned, this is where the, the Groundwater Committee actually resides, and they also help to, to develop different training courses uh, and technical content for, for members to get um, trained on. There's also the Information Technology Committee, and each year they put on the IT and Asset Management Fair, which actually just happened a couple weeks ago in the in the first week of November. Uh, and this year was the first year was joint with NUIA, which they uh, intend on making an annual um, collaboration. So that's that's pretty exciting. Um, there's also the Safety and the Small Systems Committees. Next slide. So the external affairs committee. Um, so here, there's there's a ton of different uh, committees to get involved in here, and, um, and both Dave and Matt have touched on a lot of different um, networking opportunities that these committees help organize. So uh, within here, you have the historical landmarks, um, the membership committee, which is, uh, all of us are involved in, and giving you this this webinar today. There's New England Waterworks Scholarship Committee. Uh, the Student Activities Committee, which works to encourage participation in the association from um, its student members. And then a more one, uh, or a newer committee, relatively new, is the University Outreach Committee. Um, and they they work to uh, give different 
resume review nights and career panels to uh, different colleges and universities all throughout New England. So they're pretty active um, in working with our, our local schools and um, getting more um, university students interested in understanding what the organization has to offer for them. There's also the Water for People Committee, which works with um, NUIA as a partner, and then also the Young Professionals Committee. And we've we've talked a, a lot about the different events that they put on. Um, they're Matt, as Matt mentioned, they're very active. Um, they range from more professional development events, like the presentation series, where you can work to, to build your presentation skills, as well as just straight networking events, like the annual Celtics and Red Sox games. Um, and then there's also ones that are more um, technical slash networking, like the tour and pours, where you know they'll go tour a, a local water treatment plant and then visit a, either a local brewery or bar nearby to, to rehash the the content of the tour and just network with their peers. So next slide. So the management council committee um, here within this this council, they work for the they work to develop and present on management topics at each of the different conferences and workshops or meetings that the the association puts on. Uh, so within this council, there's the customer service, emergency preparedness and security. Financial, financial management and the organizational diversity committees. And actually this, this last committee, the organizational diversity, um, they could use some support as they're getting more reinvigorated this year. And there's actually gonna be a panel at the spring conference um, which I, I forget if it was Dave or Matt mentioned, but that happens in early first week in April in Worcester every year. So if you wanna get involved, those, those folks need, need some help moving that committee along. Next slide. So I'll just buzz through these last couple councils, but within um, the Professional Development Council Committee, they work at developing different programs, courses, um, forums, and seminars that foster professional development for the association members. So there's the Board of Certification and Backflow Prevention Device Testers Committee, Education, um, operator certification and operator involvement. And there's also the Laboratory Operations Committee and they put on the Laboratory Operations Symposium each year, which happens in the fall. Um, so each of these committees works really just developing on um, um, different um, events for professionals to get certification and um, just get some more knowledge in each of these different areas. Next slide, please. Oh, sorry, this is the same slide. I need to go through the other uh, councils. There's, so there's also the, the Recognition Council. Um, there is a, probably around 15 awards that are given out around, at the annual conference each year um, that, that Dave talked about. So this committee works on um, you know, selecting um, the people that are gonna receive all those awards at the, the annual conference, which was a really great event and all these are very distinguished awards. So it's a, um, it's a really, great group to get involved in. And then there's also the Water Quality and Treatment Council. Within uh, this council, there's um, a, lot, a bunch of technical committees. So there's the Corrosion Committee, Disinfection, uh, Fluorides, and Water Treatment Plant Residuals Committees. And there's also the Filtration Committee, which puts on the big water quality symposium that happens in the spring each year. It's a, it's a really well attended event. Uh, people look forward to it every year. So if you wanna get involved in some more technical committees, the, uh, the Water Quality and Treatment Council um, would be for you. So now I'll pass it on to Dan uh, to discuss some more of the educational uh, opportunities within the organization. Thank you, Michaela, and um, good afternoon. Before I start, uh, thank you to uh, all the uh, people participating in this webinar. I know everyone's busy, um, but thank you for taking time out of your data to uh, listen about all uh, New England Waterworks has to offer. Um, as uh, Colleen indicated earlier, my name is Dan Wojcik. Um, I currently work for Penichuk Waterworks, which is located in Nashville, New Hampshire. Uh, we own and contract operate water systems throughout the state of New Hampshire and um, Massachusetts. My background uh, is in operations and business related to contract operating water systems. And I maintain um, distribution and treatment licenses both in Massachusetts and New Hampshire. So New England Waterworks has uh, really um, helped me along the way with uh, achieving and maintaining my uh, certifications. Um, 
much of what the previous presenters have spoken about already relates to the benefits of being involved with New England Waterworks through conferences, uh, exhibitions, uh, committees, which are all great um, networking events and great reasons to be involved with New England Waterworks. And I echo what all the previous presenters have said that, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a great way to network. Um, the upcoming events, Dave does a great job with the Ski Classic and uh, any other events that you can attend, um, you, you really meet a lot of people and um, it's a big benefit to your career. But as we'll see on the uh, next slide, um, I'm here today to talk about the uh, another major piece of New England Waterworks, which is uh, w which is basically the courses that are held throughout the year for individuals within the waterworks profession. New England Waterworks is accredited by the International Association for Continuing Education and Training, also known as ISET. And what does this ISET accreditation mean? Basically, it means that New England Waterworks must demonstrate and maintain that their organization provides high quality instruction by following the uh, continuing education and ISET standards um, that the uh, association goes through a rigorous process to maintain this accreditation. And basically, after a member or uh, participant completes a given course, they are granted a uh, numerical continuing education unit, which you know in the industry you know is referred to as CEU from uh, New England, which is based on the course material and duration of the course. Uh, a, a waterworks operator holds a particular license in a given state in New England, and they would be required based on that level of uh, certification to uh, maintain a certain amount of contact hours or CEUs between the license renewal period. New England uh, offers uh, hundreds of courses per year to choose from in, va in various arranged tracks uh, with the traditional ones being water distribution, water treatment, and they range from courses dedicated to timely, r relevant events in the water industry, such as lead and copper uh, training, or even courses dedicated to emerging contaminants, like like one that's coming up in December on perfluorinated compounds. All of these uh, particular courses are listed on the New England Waterworks website under training and certification, and you know, a person can query the, their course search by description, or they can look at a calendar of upcoming courses and events and search that way. And I was even surprised, you know, with we're approaching the end of the year, and as of today's date, you know, through December, there's still 35 different courses being offered um, with the remainder of the year. Uh, another point to to bring out related to the caliber of um, the the New England Waterworks section is annually New England Waterworks, as you can see in this slide, submits and competes on a national level with other American Waterworks sections. And in 2019, New England Waterworks beat 43 other sections of American Waterworks that were competing that they were competing with and they won the 2019 AWWA section award and it's it's noteworthy to point out that New England Waterworks has won this award 29 times out of the 32 times they've submitted uh, uh, and competed. This year's award in 2019 was related to youth education programs aimed at students and on the next uh, on the next slide, we'll be getting into the training and certification uh, programs offered at uh, New England Waterworks. I previously, on the last slide, indicated that training and course opportunities were for current waterworks professionals to obtain continuing education licenses. But New England uh, also promotes training for new and first-time operators who who have never sat for an exam. 
and they're beca- and they're looking to become an operator for the first time. Uh, these tracks in water treatment and water distribution, where they would be specifically prepare you to sit for an individual to sit for an exam, are offered at different times throughout the year. And some of the New England states, Massachusetts comes to mind, would require someone to take a course like this before they can even sit for certain exams. So this requirement has been something that New England Waterworks is ready to uh, to, to help satisfy. Um, what the the other specialized items that New England currently uh, is capable and qualified and very successful at training uh, individuals at are in the areas of backflow and cross connection prevention, excavation, backhoe training, and safety training. For those if you don't know that uh, in a potable water system, you know, to, to be dealing with testing and installing backflow uh, devices, you have to be licensed. So like the water operator certificates that we and licenses that we previously talked about, New England, um, ha- New England has programs to deal with the initial licensing and then recertification for uh, backflow testers, and also they can train uh, cross-connection surveyors. Um, another area that is a specialized training and successful from the New England Waterworks, I took part in this, is their excavation uh, and um, backhoe training and licensing program. This is really convenient where people can you know, attend over the course of a week, get hands-on experience with a backhoe, uh, expert training, and then potentially achieve a license at the end of the week-long seminar, which again, certain states, Massachusetts comes to mind, requires you to have this uh, license to operate a backhoe. Uh, a final uh, niche that um, has worked out good for training is in the areas of safety. As you know, we all know, no matter where we work, public, private, company, employees' safety is uh, is uh, key. And there are even um, compliance issues and regulations that New England Waterworks can train to. And some of the successful areas and courses that are offered are in excavation safety, OSHA training, compi- combined, uh, excuse me, confined safe space training, to name a few. And New England Waterworks staff will also work on, on the prospect of uh, providing specific job safety training to different groups of people. And we'll talk more about that um, in future slides. But finally, the the, the bottom component on this slide is related to the New England Waterworks Certificate Program. This is is a nice feature that New England offers. If you work with New England Waterworks and uh, chart a course, you can take um, several of the core courses and also take some uh elective courses and transition yourself to have a certificate either in water distribution or water treatment or you could perhaps do both and this would be this is a nice resume booster too for potential employers that you have gone above and beyond um your initial licensing requirements to obtain the new england waterworks certificate which if you chart this out, a lot of the courses you will, you'll you take in over a period of time to achieve your license anyway. So it's kind of a, 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 a twofer that you can get out of uh, taking courses at, at New England Waterworks. On the, ne- on the next slide, we're going to speak about the uh, symposiums that are offered uh, over the um, calendar year at New England Waterworks. And basically there are four main uh, annual symposia, if you will, the Water Resources and Sustainability Symposium, the uh, Information Technology and Asset Management Fair, which has already been spoken about earlier, the Water Quality Symposium, and the Laboratory Operations Symposium. Um, the the four symposiums are offered on an annual basis. To two in the fall, two in the spring. Um, right now, a hard dead, uh, date is not set, but you can go on the website under um, the symposium information page 
and you can see the descriptions from 2019 and really see the the caliber of uh of spe of presenters and topics and depending on you know as the titles suggest if you're in the, if you're you know on the information technology side of things or water op water quality side of things which i you know i've attended on an annual basis um you know you really have some interesting and uh great topics on the next on the next slide i'm going to speak about um the various um, training locations that are offered at New England Waterworks. The, the, tra the training locations, uh, you, can you can go to the, the uh, main campus in Holliston, which is where the main office is, and several of the uh, courses that are offered throughout the years are there. And you know, depending on where you live, um, that location can be convenient. Or uh, if it's a particular course you want to see throughout the year, um, you can you may have to travel there. But New England Waterworks also has several uh, satellite training locations throughout New England. Um, I'm most familiar with New Hampshire. I work in New Hampshire, so if there's something scheduled in New Hampshire, I'll I'll attend uh, a session there. And additionally, you know the pro the programs we've we previously talked about related to backflow and cross connection have been so successful, and I know New England Waterworks is so well known that they travel outside of New England to Pennsylvania, New York, and New Jersey, um, and have really uh, done a great job uh, attracting um, first time testers and then people who are going for their renewal certifications. And then most recently, uh, in a, an area that um, New England has really promoted and doing a nice job, and we can relate to this in Nashua, is what's called contract training. So for example, Penichuk uh, partners with a neighboring utility, Manchester, New Hampshire Waterworks, and we commit to having a number of employees uh, at one location, a New England instructor will come for the particular topic, whether it be related to distribution or treatment, et cetera. And then we'll, we'll sometimes we'll go to Manchester, sometimes they'll go to Nashua. So it's really, you know, even if you're a smaller utility and you can work with New England Waterworks to partner with neighboring smaller communities, it's a great way to, uh, to train conveniently and not have to travel if you are uh, in, a, uh, in a remote, area and finally on the uh, last slide of my slide deck we're we're talking about some of the benefits and and the free benefits that are available on the new england waterworks website um, they basically have a nice job uh, with a, a again free training program for drinking uh, water board members and there's also a uh, free um, program that you can focus on fi the financial um, aspects of running a small system. And then also on this page, there's some uh, information on how to deal or to learn about and how to deal with um, issues that come up in the public, specifically related to bacteria or the total coliform rule, and then Legionella, which in recent uh, in recent years has popped up in the news and they have some good free information on how to uh, how to explain and deal with these scenarios should they come up. So finally in closing I just want to echo what um, my experience has been you know in the water industry for 10 years got involved with New England Waterworks uh, right from the beginning and the networking and training opportunities has really been great for me and we employ approximately 120 people and you know we're sending people to New England Waterworks to maintain their license because of the quality and caliber of education. Thank you. Okay, thanks Dan. This is Colleen again. Um, hopefully our presenters have really inspired you to um, join our association if you're not yet a member or if you are um, seek ways to become more involved. I just wanted to touch upon a few um, 
quick wrap-up items if you're looking to um, join us on a committee or a yeah, special event in the future. So some upcoming volunteer opportunities that you could dive into right away is um, on the membership committee, we're always looking for new members. Um, in particular, we look to do member-to-member -member outreach programs such as welcoming new members or reaching out to people who may have let their membership lapse. And we also have a membership drive, which is essentially a competition for um, recruiting and, um, you know, people who recruit enough members get entered into a drawing to win special prizes. Um, the Young Professionals Committee is also a committee that always um, is looking for and welcoming new members. And um, one of the things that you can do to help get involved there is to um, volunteer to help out with one of their upcoming events, such as a tour and pour, which is essentially where you combine a brewery tour with a treatment plant tour or something like that. We also have our university outreach committee, um, which, um, you know, encourages um, local professionals and alumni to um, go to different universities and try to recruit new members as well as to give students um, beneficial programs such as career panels and resume reviews. And um, finally, the Water Resources, Conservation, Sustainability, and Groundwater Committees are always looking for help for more people to help out with the Water Resources Symposium. Um, this slide kind of um, provides some additional um, committees that are actively looking for members. We have our Water for People Committee, which is um, tasked in trying to develop different fundraising programs for the Water for People charity. Um, we also have our Organizational Diversity Committee, um, which is looking for help for that panel that will occur in April at our Worcester Conference. Um, our newly established Customer Service Committee is always looking for new members, um, as well as our Disinfection Committee, Youth Education, Laboratory Operations, Historical Landmarks, and Information Technology. Mary Quigley is a staff member at New England Water Works Association, and she is a great person to contact if you're looking to get involved in a committee um, and put you in touch with committee chairs. I also wanted to touch upon some upcoming events. So the image to the right shows um, kind of a snapshot of what our New England Water Works Association membership calendar looks like and how you can navigate there. And this is a great tool for figuring out where um, upcoming trainings might be, upcoming networking events, things like that. Um, Later this week, we do have the November monthly meeting in Rhode Island. So if you're local to that area, I definitely encourage you to check that out. December 3rd, we are having a No Water, No Beer fundraising event. That'll occur at Night Shift Brewery, and um, the objective there is to do some networking and hopefully raise some money for um, the Water Equation charity program. As David mentioned, we also have the December monthly meeting at the Lantana coming up December 19th, which is always a great event. There's plenty of networking, some interesting technical sessions, as well as opportunities to raise money for Water for People and um, see some awards. So definitely check out our website um, for additional information pertaining to that. Um, the final thing I wanted to cover is just some thank yous. Um, our other pre um, presenters, Matt, Dave, Michaela, and Dan, thank you for volunteering to help out with this. Uh, we also had um, some significant support from the New England Water Works Association staff, in particular Kirsten King, Caitlin Tedesco, and Mary Quigley. Um, Cassandra Larachal from Time Bond is our membership committee vice chair, and she was pivotal pulling together the slides um, that corresponded with our presentation. And finally, Danielle Jackson from CDM Smith, who helped us get this webinar off the ground and was our technical coordinator working with the GoToWebinar software and helping um, troubleshooting with um, all of our participants. Um, so with that, I'd like to... Um, Thank you all for sticking with us during your lunch hour and um, welcome any questions that anyone might have. So um, I'm taking a look at the questions at this time and it doesn't look like any have been submitted. But um, if anyone has a question, um, you can submit it into this questions panel. I guess one, one thing that I'd like to reiterate is, um, you know, your membership in the Water Works Association really is um, what you put into it. So um, I know for me, the easiest way to start getting involved was um, joining the mentoring program and really being paired up with someone that can um, look at what your interests are and um, make suggestions to committees. And then um, my story is I then went to um, Young Professionals and um, 
got involved with that. Um, and then finally, um, you know, joining another committee such as membership or something technical. So we just got a question. Um, I hear you have awesome ambassadors that could introduce me to committee chairs to help me find a meeting I'm interested in. Can I email or request to meet one at your next event? So the answer to that is absolutely. Um, our ambassador program is essentially where we pair new members with um, an established member and um, they're a person that you can go to to um, you know, introduce you to new people and things like that. Dave Polkari is a pivotal member of this program. Dave, I don't know if you have anything additional to add. Nope, thanks, Colleen. But it is a great opportunity if um, if you want to, you know, have an ambassador to help you out. I know I've introduced a lot of people to uh, to new members, and uh, you know, just try to steer them to committees that they might might want to be involved in. And just uh, it's always good to have someone alongside to help show you the ropes, especially if it's your first time at a meeting. Thanks, Colleen. Thanks, Dave. Um, so we have a second um, question. Um, do you get a lot of water treatment plant operators active in different committees? Um, so I don't know, um, Mary or Kirsten, would you be able to better answer that question? I know um, obviously we got you know someone like Dan who's in operations active in education, but I don't know if you have any other kind of success stories to share. Hi, thanks, Colleen. This is Kirsten uh, on staff with New England Waterworks. So we do have operators. Uh, we have an operator involvement committee that is getting back up and running, which is pretty exciting. Bob Radigan is the chair of that committee. So if anyone on the line is interested, they can certainly contact our office and we'll be happy to put you in touch with him. In addition, our innovations committee has also pulled a lot of operators in via our hydrant hysteria program. So that's another really fun way to uh, for operators to get involved. But short answer, yes, we do have operators and we would love more. So if you are interested, by all means, give myself or Mary at the office a call. Great, thanks, Kirsten. So we have another question. New England Water Works Association sounds like the best association ever. I'd like to invite my coworkers to join. Can I help sign them up as members and be entered to win valuable prizes? Should I bring them to the member breakfast in December? Um, so that is a resounding yes. Um, we definitely encourage people to take part in our membership drive, um, which essentially evolves um, using a special form um, where the potential new member will list you as their sponsor, and both you and the new member will be entered into a raffle to win um, a number of prizes. Um, these prizes are awarded at our new member breakfast in December at the Lantana meeting. So for those interested in attending that, um, the breakfast is from 8 to 9 o'clock in the morning and we go over, um, you know, some graduations from the mentoring program as well as recognizing our recruiters and new members. And um, this is also an event where you can request an ambassador. I don't know if any of the other presenters have um, Anything additional to add there? Okay, well that looks like um, all we have now for um, questions, but if anyone has any additional questions, um, I definitely encourage you to contact us. Um, here is our contact information, and we'd be glad to um, answer any additional questions that come up. Um, I really appreciate everyone for calling in and participating in our webinar. And um, for that, I'd like to um, thank you and sign off.